name of Jesus. We pray that your power, your glory, your strength, your wisdom will dwell within us tonight in the name of Jesus. And Amen. Your glory, your glory, almighty God, will be with us in the name of Jesus. As we start this program, in the name of the Father, and in the Son, and the, in the Holy Spirit, we pray that your power, your mightiness, will flow, will overflow among us in the name of Jesus. And we pray that as many that are watching us from all over the world, wherever you are, we pray that the Spirit of the Lord will touch you tonight. Ah, because there is no barrier in the things of the Lord. Ah, because the word of God is yea and amen. Father, Lord, we pray that your spirit will dwell around us and we will encounter you, Lord, most importantly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we are a faithful God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I'm super excited tonight because God in his mercy, is about to do something wonderful. God is about to do something wonderful in our midst tonight. I mean, today is a Wednesday, the second Wednesday of the month of March. Gradually, we are going to, I mean, we are progressing this year in the, to the glory of God. And we just want to, we do not take it for granted. We just want to thank the Lord for what he's been doing we, all, we want to thank him because he's a merciful God. You know, he has, shown us, he has shown us so much love. So much love. So much love that we cannot quantify. Be thou exalted, Lord. Let's just sing this song uh, as we appreciate everyone joining us tonight. Um, wherever you are, we, we appreciate you. My name remains Emmanuel Oladone Damiro. I'm your host for tonight. Please keep tuning in. If you're on Facebook right now, please tune in, tune in, tune in. Join us for this program. This is an encounter, the encounter 41. Um, and God has been faithful. God has been faithful. If you're watching from YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that when we are live, we can notify you. Or when we upload any video, we can notify you. Hallelujah. Your love is kind.
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in His name. There is power in Your name. Miracles happen in Your name. As we lift the hands in praise, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. At the center of it all is the Lord that we see in everything we do. Because he's our great comforter, he's our healer, he's our everything. We just thank him for who he is. We thank him because he's I am that I am. The lily of the valley, the rock of ages, the rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star, the unquestionable God, the rose of Sharon, the immovable God. We thank you, Lord. The one that was, that is, that is to come. The bigger and the biggest, we worship you tonight. The king in authority, the most powerful God, the creator of the universe. Why Elohim is his name. Adonai is his name. The great I am. We worship you. The conqueror of the lion of Judah. Have a father. You are the ancient of days. Because you created time in your time, we call you the timeless one. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Hallelujah. You are the reason why we are singing, Jehovah. You are the most I God. You are the reason why we are singing, Jehovah. You are the most I God. You are the reason why we are fellowship. You are the move I got. You are the reason why we are gathered today, yo. You are the most I got. Jehovah, you are the most I Jehovah, you are the most I got. Jehovah, Worship him tonight. Father, accept our worship in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. You are our strength, according to Psalm 43, verse 2. You will always be our strength. You are our shelter. You are our friend, our advocate, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. Father, the great restorer, the everlasting Father. You have shown us so much love, exceeding love. First John 4, 16, it says he has shown us so much joy, exceeding love, that we cannot even comprehend. Father, we thank you because you are a faithful God. We thank you because you are a merciful God. You are our strong hold. In the book of Nahim 1, 7, it says God is our strong hold. And we make a reference to this tonight because you have proven yourself. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. You have never lived nor forsake us. And we'll bless you, Lord. We'll bless you. We'll bless you. You have not left us to forsake us. And tonight, we just bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are a faithful God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Beloved, tonight, um, we are in a going to be treating um, a special topic tonight. This is the Encounter Series 41 and by the grace of God we have a man of God here again. Anytime we call on him he's ever ready. You know, that passion is something that amazes me and we just bless the name of him for his life. We want to thank the Lord for his uh, faithfulness upon his life. We want to thank the Lord because he's a faithful God. We want to thank the Lord because he's a merciful God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be treating a topic, a special topic tonight, um, which is very, very, very peculiar. You know, in our daily life, we need the wisdom of the Lord. We need the wisdom of the Lord. God is the beginning and the end. Is the omnipotent, is the El Shaddai, is the one that has all power, all wisdom, all knowledge at hand. And tonight, uh, we're going to be discussing this peculiar, peculiar topic by Blicker Principles uh, for Life Skills and Goals Setting. What are the by Blicker Principles? You want to hear about this? And uh, please, as you listen to this man of God, that is going to put the light into this. Yeah. I want you to open your heart. There are so many times I listen to things. And at times God open my eyes differently. As I make my heart open and focus. And this is what I want you to do tonight. Because God is about to reveal itself. Hallelujah. Um, I, I want to welcome Pastor Edwin into our midst. Uh, tonight, Pastor Edwin is uh, the pastor. Is a pastor from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Agape family from Tramo. For those that does not that have not met him, he's based in the Republic of Ireland, and he'll be joining on this program tonight. Pastor Edwin, you're welcome, sir. Unmute yourself, sir. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Okay, I've done that. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, my host. And good evening to every Christians, every believers, and non-believers that are on the platform tonight. Uh, I bring you greetings in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I bring you greetings from the general overseer of our power of our church, the redeemed Christian Church of God, our esteemed Father in the Lord, Pastor Ye Adeboye who just celebrated 79th birthday this month. And uh, he has celebrated 48th anniversary of being called to be the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And in the Holy Ghost services, he has celebrated by the grace of God, which is just concluded on Sunday, the 35th year of the special Holy Ghost services in Nigeria and all around the world. Not only that, the Redeemer is going through 63 days of fasting and waiting now, which God has helped us so far, and uh, God is being good in the third segment. And I want to bring you greeting, esteemedly, from even my general here, the mission coordinator, which is our regional continental pastor, Pastor Tunde Adebayo Oke. Why we bring you all these greetings and all the pastors at the home? And I bring you greetings from my family. Uh, they have been of great support and tremendous influence on this, uh, 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 on these teachings. Uh, let us pray. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done. We are so blessed. Our souls have found rest, oh God, we give you thanks. 
We are grateful, oh Lord. Hallelujah, oh, we are grateful, oh Lord, Abba Father, for all you have done for us. Oh, hallelujah, we are grateful, oh Lord. Our Father, our Rock, our Redeemer, our Savior, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the one that was, the one that is, the one that is to come, the Almighty, we thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for all that is going on around the world, yet you saved us. We thank you for the salvation of our souls. We thank you for all our leaders. We thank you for the opportunity to be again on this platform in the Encounter Series 41. And Lord God, we bless you. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. God, as we come before you, God, to have deeper understanding, to discover and to rediscover your principles. I pray, God Almighty, every single one of us indeed open our hearts and let the Holy Spirit be divine with us, that He will teach us all things. And according to the word of the scriptures, that we will become a doer of them. And no sooner than we do, Lord, all glory will return to you as we are blessed by them. And with thanksgiving, we are asked, sealing with the precious blood of Jesus. And forever, God, please be glorified. I put myself before you tonight, oh God, please use me, help me. And at the end, don't make me a castaway and my family. For Joshua said, for me and my house, we will serve you. Grant us this grace to God forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Like our principles that will help us in our life skill and how to set our goals. Uh, by the grace of God, this teaching, we, this section will be of a teaching, will be of a learning, will be impartation, and I will try and give few words of encouragement and hope that you can go back like an assignment and try to do them on your own. I've done it, it has worked for me. And like they say in the army, everything is on a continuous basis. Promotion, dismissal, recruitment, uh, dispatch, sending forth, everything. So it's not a loan that we just learned tonight. It's more than a loan that we try to put our Add to it and we do it every time. So as we check it out, we redot the I, we recall the T, and we keep going on. We will discover by the grace of God, we are in for a good tithing as children of God in Jesus' name. I'll be encouraging us with uh, two, three or more scriptures to put home and drive things better. For example, Series 41, they say life begins at 40. And I'm privileged again, like uh, I was privileged to do Series 33. Life has begun for someone here tonight in Jesus' name. As you make a discovery, as you make a rediscovery, as you begin to put perspective into the applications of what Bible says. So if we can get it in the scripture, we can read it out in the scripture, that means it is done, it can be done. And once it's done, as God says, then that means there will be performance of it. Because the book of Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 37 said, For with God nothing shall be impossible. And he went further in the book of the same Luke 1, 45, he said, There will be performance in our prayers. And I therefore pray and plead and command and decree by demand that there will be performance in everybody's life tonight, such that your performance of God, miracles of God, wonders of God, signs following it in our life from what meeting we are having tonight, we spread gloriously to the entire world, touch the whole world, because the Bible even said to us in Deuteronomy 28, it said we will be lenders to nation and not the tail, but be the head that will make things good and it will come to pass. So these are my focus for making discovery, making these biblical principles and wanting to 
fishes that have been enjoyed. For example, let's look at Psalm 90, Psalm 90, verse 10 to 12. Verse 10 to 12. What does it say? <laughs> because I know a lot of people just, you know, most times we just come to church. We hardly bring our notes, our pen and papers. But my encouragement tonight is if you have opportunity to have your pen, your paper around you, it will be more glorious so that you can put up a little, little jottings because of time constraints. And uh, I hope I will plead with the host. If we cannot finish, if you give us another opportunity to have a part two or part three of it, and I'll be delighted as well. So Psalm 90 verse 10 to 12 says, the days of our years are three scores, years and 10. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years, yet is their strength labor, is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. I look at that and I wonder. Then the Bible went for that to say, Who know the power of thy anger? Even at verse 12 says specifically admonishing us, encouraging us. He says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto wisdom. I pray tonight by his grace, somebody will be applying their heart Hello. Hello. Yeah, can, can we hear? Can you yes. hear me? I, I saw the system saying reconnecting again, so I don't know. I hope uh, we are still on course. Okay, I'm connected. Okay. So, strength in this passage of the Bible says boast. A lot of us, we cannot boast of strength at certain age anymore. So therefore, the lesson is teaching us that if Bible is saying that you have 70 years to live and you have by strength, by boast of energy, you can add another 10. It means what? 80 years to live. Now, the word I want to first admonish and encourage us is written in the book of James chapter one, James chapter one. James, we have heard, is a brother of Jesus. He was with Jesus. He knows so much about Jesus, just like in John chapter two, when the mother of Jesus and Jesus was called to a marriage in Cana in Galilee, and they said there was no wine, and mother of Jesus knew her son very well. And when they said, oh, please do this, he said, look, don't worry. Whatever he says you should do, you should do. So the same way James is a brother to Jesus. So what am I saying here is that James said to us in verse 20 to 22, 24, they are about of James chapter one. He said, we must learn to be the doers of the word, not just the era alone, because when we just hear and we don't apply to doing it. So what he's saying in other words is take action. If we don't take action, it's presupposed that we are just looking for nothing. So we will not look for nothing tonight in the name of Jesus. So when the Bible says by boast, by strength, it teaches us and help us and is encouraging us to apply wisdom to our life living. What that presupposes is that you have a knowledge because Bible in Isaiah 4 says people are destroyed because they lack. That knowledge is with wisdom. You apply wisdom. So when you apply wisdom to knowledge, it becomes something good. So in other words, let's look at our life. Now, that's why I say you should take a pen and a paper. First assignment of first litmus is put up your age. Put up what Bible says you are. You should be or you can attain. 70 years, and I know some of us, if not almost all of us, we will surpass that in Jesus' name. Now, look at your age today. Put it and say 70 deduct 
your x y z your age is equals to what then look at that angle and see what is it that you are ready to achieve with these principles that we are going to encourage ourselves tonight and what are the lines you are going to be drawing up for them to meet in Jesus' name that you must meet. Now, let's look at a life. I put my note this way, for example. I said, let's look at a life before COVID. Before COVID-19, there is a life strain we have been on. Now, this time of lockdown, what have you been able to do with your life? What have you been measured to do with your life? Glory be to God Almighty for the our Father in the Lord, the General of Self Redeem, our Father Pastor Ye Adeboye, who has over time taught us. He said there must be a leaping up from our locking down. So do we realize that? So there is a stage pre COVID nineteen. There is a gap in between. If I were you, I would be writing that in my note. There is a gap in between called the lockdown period. What am I doing? What have I done? What am I continuously been doing? You understand with this lockdown. Then some are working at home, fine, glory be to God. Some are, you know, barely managing to get things the way they are. But most assuredly, majority, like 90% had this problem of lockdown. So now let's now look, okay, if lockdown is over, what happened post COVID? Now is the period now vaccine is going on. Now, what are you still yet doing with all this, with agendas coming up? The agenda saying that there'll be something worse than COVID, but I have a good news that is breaking for you. First Peter 2.24 says, by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. So I receive this for myself and for you that by the grace of God, irrespective of what is going to come after COVID, you will be immune by the precious blood of Jesus. Because Revelation 12, 12 11 says it. He said, by the blood of Jesus and by the word of our testimonies, he said, things will come to be. Now, another thing I want to ask you, and I want you to put your heart to, is media, the media. How have we used the media in these times and the Bibles, and what is it saying to us? Remember in the book of Ephesians, the Bible says, it said, the element of evil, that is Satan, is the principalities and power in the ear. The prince of the ear is Satan. So read it very well in Ephesians. I think Ephesians chapter two is the ear. So how have you been using the power of the media along the line, your principles of sustaining your goal, your life skill, and so on and so forth. Now, I read and I discovered age zero to six, you have a lot you can do. You have nothing you can do. You can play. You can do sort. We have between seven and 12. Look at Jesus in most of the temples. When we add in the temples, Bible said to us, even at the age of 12, Jesus was already applying wisdom because it's a divinity of God Almighty presented to us to take away our sins. Now, already he was teaching the noble people in the synagogue or in the temple as it were written in some Bible. He was already teaching. So, okay, the, 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 the effect of this is between zero and 12, if you are in that category group or you have a kids in that category book, uh, groups, what have you been admonishing them? What have you been teaching them? Then 13 to 19, which is a very sensitive age bracket, the teenagers, 13, 14, 15, 16, and so on. By the grace of God, I'm privileged to have a girl turn 13 this year. And we know it's a different ball game now by the grace of God. And we are beginning to look at the trend of things, our expectations, our giving, and so on and so forth, and our support for, for her. Now, age 20 to 40, if you are in that age bracket again, what are you looking at? Then if you are in age 41, which encounter series is 41 today, and 49, what is it when they say life begins at that day? And 40, if you are in that 
49 and you are going to enter 50, what are the things God wants to see you do? What are the life skills you must begin to put in? I've read a lot of, a few books, and you, like I said, you, you continually, continuously read, you continuously apply wisdom, you continuously put position to things, and you look at how these things go. You understand, a lot of people at 50, there are no more strengths. A lot of people at 50, like it just begin to begin, 50 becomes a jubilee line of a life. If you study the book of Leviticus, you see there, it's a freedom time, you know, when they, they, they thought of the slave and they will tell the slave, if you want to go now, go now. If you don't want to go now, stay now, and so on and so forth. You will now ask me, what are the relevance of all these things? I read in the book that as expectations of freedom, 10% lived beyond 50. So if you are in between age bracket I've shared with you and 50, what are you doing? If you are between age 50 and beyond, what are you doing? Now you ask yourself, Bible says, I will live 70 years, 70 years. Okay, if I'm going to live 70 years, now between 60 and 70 is your retirement age. Have you thoroughly really sat behind Talk of certain things about your career. Think of certain things about your self-development. Think of certain things about your emotions and relationship management. Have you sat down and look at how have you been leading in your home, in your workplace, and so on? Have you sat down and look at your finances and your time management? What about your peer influence? What about your dressing and what about your addiction and relationship with opposite sex? So these are things we want to look at today quickly. And we will look at how can we begin to apply our heart to wisdom? How do we begin to apply our heart to wisdom? Realistically, brothers and sisters on this platform, and as if you go later on, I know some of us will worship. Tradition also set us that our prime life is between 40 and 60. Thank God for people that has seen opportunities, captured opportunities, gone with opportunity, ran with opportunity, and God has answered them. For example, you want to wonder, how do I begin to set a goal? The Bible records in the book of Genesis 11, Genesis 11 verse 3, Genesis 11 verse 3, if you read down, it talked about certain group of people that call themselves together and say, look, we have a target, we have a goal, we have to do something. Let's bring brick, let's burn it, let's begin to build for ourselves and let's see how far we can go. So any time between now, as you are listening to me by the grace of God, you will have to begin to consciously begin to look at what is my life like today? What has been my life before now? I call it sorting out and I call it a trend, a pattern. You probably see a pattern in your dad, in your mom, in your gene, in your generation or the stories they have told you and the likes. And you wonder, what are these patterns like? How am I going to begin to build or rebuild? Then you look at this and this again. What is the pattern and trend of this world today? Now we're in technological age now that almost everything, even to carry cash now, is almost like a taboo. You know, everything is fast running. AI, artificial intelligence, everything is fast running beyond man comprehension. A lot are happening now. Are you keen into, are you pipeline with this? Are you ongoing with this? And I pray that by the grace of God, the seed that you need, the power that you need, the resource that you need to reset your life skill and goal, God will begin to give you today anew in Jesus' name. Like I told us, Psalm 90 verse 10 to 12 is just one of the verses which we have used to start and to kick. Now, let's look at another Bible passage and look at a character. 
Let's, for example, look at Genesis 41, Genesis 41, verse 33 to 38, Genesis 41, verse 33 to 38. You see why I'm particularly happy about this kind of encounter series and the team that the host has agreed to share is that I'm praying and thanking God for our young, younger ones on this platform or the younger ones that will re listen if they are not on this platform at the moment to this kind of a topic so that it can ginger them, it can encourage them, it can give them hope that, oh, okay, what is it I'm doing now that I ought not to be doing? What is it that I'm supposed to be doing and I'm not doing and I can begin to realize myself to reset my life to the things of God? You know what Psalm 119 says, Psalm 119 verse 105. He said, my, the Bible, that is the scripture, thy word will be a light unto my heart. This kind of thing in biblical preference or references so that we can see how it is done. So these kids that I'm admonishing, encouraging, they will know how to renew and to reset their careers. So the story in Genesis 41, 33 to 38, I will just quickly summarize because of our time. It was a story that concerned a young boy called Joseph, a young man called Joseph, a character study. In that story, we know that Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a dream. After he had the dream, Joseph interpreted the dream to mean S, Y, Z. But while Joseph was interpreting the dream, Joseph strategically interpreted the dream. Let me tell you what happens in those days, according to what I've read some literatures. In those days, when people dream, dream like Pharaoh dreamt, what they do is that they cough incantation. They speak incantation to avert the negativity of that. And that is the same thing some of us, if not many of us are still doing today. There are places, there are things we ought to do. There are things that are bugging us. We will want to go to Habalis. We want to go to some people that are occult to find out going from pillar to post, whereas we don't need it. All we need is the word of God. According to Joshua 1.8, he said, meditate on this book of the law day and night and observe to do according to what is written therein so that your ways will become prosperous and you have good success. Many of us are not doing that. That is the problem. But then, Pharaoh was very lucky that he, instead of incantation, like I've just tried to explain because of time, like I've said, he had Joseph. Joseph came interpreted. But while Joseph was interpreting, he strategically began to tell Pharaoh what to do. What are the strategic moves that Joseph told Pharaoh? One, Joseph asked Pharaoh, he said, Please look for men that have discerning spirit and wisdom in the land. Two, look for officers that can take charge of what is going to come so that these officers can go around and begin to strategically rebuild and re, you know, redeem a lot of things. What are the duties of these people? The other officers will go, they will tell the story. The other officers, when it was in times of plenty, because the dream that was interpreted for Pharaoh was a dream of famine, that there will be famine in Egypt for seven years. And Joseph said, okay, that dream, you know what we are going to do, Pharaoh? We're going to re-strategize that dream. When there is plenty, what do we do with the plenty? Same thing is happening to us today, brothers and sisters. That's why the Bible told us that while we are growing, we must learn to apply wisdom where strength is still there. 
Some of us, sometimes we have money. We have excess money. We don't know what to do. We spend it on things that we don't even need at the moment. Instead of us to go to financial consultant, brokers, or friends that are more knowledgeable and say, S Y in resource I have, what can I do with it? Then you will encourage one another. You will look at strategy with which to do it. And you begin to apply yourself to doing them. So you must have, again, what I call understanding of the time and season. Because a time will come, there will be plenty in your hands. A time will come, there will be, maybe you are trying to manage. Let's say, for example, some of us now may be getting towards our retirement, aside the young ones that have been encouraged by the grace of God, they have plan and time to begin to plan themselves. That's why I said, Abinicio, that this team tonight is a team that will help you to discover and rediscover and help you to plan and reply yourself and help your destiny for the purpose exactly for what God has made you to have. Some people now, they are at the age of 50, going to 60, 60 going to 70. Have you really sat down to think your retirement? What if you get a bulk money in retirement? What are you going to do with it? These are these all the controversies that are going around the world, all the theories that are going around the world. What do you do? You still have kids in school. What do you do? Have you been able to plan? Have you been able to see things? And another thing I want us to look at why we are making that strategic move is to ask ourselves questions. A lot of us, we don't pinch ourselves. A lot of us, we don't hard enough to ourselves. A lot of us, we are not ready to pay price now to enjoy the fruit of the game in the future. A lot of us are not ready to pay the sacrifice now to know what is going on to happen in the future. For example, like I said while I was starting, the Lord, yes, told our Father in the Lord and said, please tell all the redeemites of the Lord that they must begin to fast and wait on him from January 11, 2021 to March 14, 2021, 63 days of three segments. Some have done it. Some have speed it up 12, 12 days, dry fast, they are there. But one thing I tell you is that while you are doing this, these are part of what you need in this, our biblical principles to rediscovering our life skills and our goal setting. How do I know this? There was a case in the book of Mark 9, 29, Mark 9, 29, when the disciples could not heal certain problem up and Jesus came and Jesus healed and the disciple came back to Jesus and said, Jesus, how come we cannot do it? You know what Jesus told them? He said, you will have done it, but you couldn't do it. You know why you don't do it? Because nothing of this sort can be achieved except by prayer and fasting. By the grace of God, few people that are waiting on the Lord, they will see the outcome. But one thing I'm sure of that kind of waiting on the Lord globally is it will become positive outcome. And I pray when it comes, you will enjoy part of it in Jesus' name. So if you haven't done it, I will encourage you to start doing it as well. So Joseph was a young man, he interpreted this dream to, 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 to Pharaoh, but he never stood there. He strategically planned for it. I can give you another Bible, Bible reference that I knew did the same thing. When you study the book of Mark chapter five, Mark chapter five, you talk about from verse 25 down, there is this popular story there and popular miracle there called the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood was a person like you and I that had challenges about how can you redeem her career? How can, he redeem she, how can she redeem her health? How can she redeem her finances? And so on. But the day she had Jesus was passing by, 
The day she saw Jesus by herself passing by, using her eyes, what is the eye? The eye is a vision. Glory be to God for the redeemed Christian church of God. Like I said, our esteemed father in the Lord, Pastor Yadibu, who has been teaching us about a series since the beginning of the year called God Bless You. We are in part three in this month, and the part three of this month was talking about, I will lift up my eyes. I will lift up my eyes. Then anybody that lift up eyes is seeking for what? For a help. So this woman with the issue of blood lifted her eyes to see Jesus. The day she saw Jesus was the day strategy came into her. If you look at the Bible very well, it will tell you in certain places, it said about your thoughts. What is your thoughts, brothers and sisters, today? The Bible said in Genesis, that the thought of man are desperately wicked, who can behold it? Yes. But at the same time, the book of Romans 12 said to us, it said, I beseech you, brethren, by the renewing of your mind, means transforming it. I have a divine breaking news for someone tonight. And the divine breaking news is that hope is not lost. Almighty God is coming, renewing you alive and new again. Your hope in Christ is not lost and it can't be lost and it's not lost at all and it will never be lost. I said by the time I'm concluding, I can tell you the only people that cannot gain such a hope or such a privilege into renewing or rediscovering themselves tonight according to this teaching and putting things in perspective. Then the woman said, in that thought, only if I can touch the hem of the garment of Jesus. And that happened. Glory be to God. So now, the same way I want you to begin to re-strategize your life and your destiny. Putting the age the Bible says you are going to, manusing it, deducting your age today, looking at the strength, looking at your resources, looking at the things that are in the, up in, 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 the, in, the, in the world that you can use. Every single one of us are privileged to have. If you are still alive, living, that is the more reason why I am sure and I assure you and I'm prophesying that you have hope. For the fact that the breath of life is still in you, you have hope. Because the lifter of head, that is our God, he will lift you and I up again in Jesus' name. Not only that, like I told you, I want you to begin to remodify these settings. It could be in your marriage. It could be in your finances. It could be in your relationship. It could be in your health. Then the next thing we want to look at is then what is a goal? A goal is a desirable outcome that someone will carefully, you will carefully, like I'm saying to you, because we cannot finish this topic tonight, I assure you. And that's why I will ask again that we'll come to the part of it to put a lot into perspective and as we see it. So the hope is that when you look at that goal, you are carefully selecting the outcome to the end. The book of Luke chapter 14 verse 28 says, is there a man that wants to have a building that will not first sit down, think of it true. Look at if, if you have enough money to set the plan, to do the drawing, to set the block, to complete it. Otherwise, that person will not be to shame. I pray tonight, all of us on this platform and who we represent and who we make impact from it will not be put to shame in Jesus' name. So if you look at we are going to look at the things about our career. If you study the book of Proverbs 11, 23, Proverbs 11, 23, it talks about how we can decide what level we want to reach in our career. You are a professional man. Set a life skill for yourself in your profession, in your career. For example, you are a teacher. Do you want to become a principal? Do you want to become a vice principal? Do you want to own a school after a few time of teaching? You are a carer. What do you want to do? 
Do you want to stay in the care job for how long? Do you want to have your own care home? What do you do? This is your career. This is your profession. Oh, you are a logistic man. Oh, you are a medical doctor. What do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What is your ultimate goal? You want to become a consultant or you just want to do it for a while and go doing other things? What is your goal? And that is what the Bible is encouraging us tonight. And the second thing is that about our finances, do we set finance on our, do we set a target, a goal, a setting on our finances? Like I said, some of us can enter into a shop. We get our salary. Majority hardly even pay tight out of it. Majority hardly even, you know, throw money towards the gospel financing and so on and so forth. We just throw money. There's something in accounting or in management we call impromptu buying. Oh, because so-so and so is buying it, I have, buy, I have to buy it, I have to belong. No, this is not the way we set a life skill and a goal for our life. And that is why this topic today is coming up and the team today is coming up. So let's be careful how we set our finances from now on. Let's look at things that will not add on to us. Let's deduct them from it. Two, our educational career. Like I said to you in the book of Isaiah 4, 6, the Bible says, practically straight. It said, people, nations, organizations are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I've said to us at the beginning, while I'm introducing this thing to us, I said, the Bible said to us in Psalm 90 already, that God should please teach us to number our days that we may apply wisdom. And wisdom is the application of knowledge. Now, your educational career, what are you doing? Do you know, do you have enough knowledge of what you need to have to be able to do it? Look at Matthew chapter 25. The 10 virgins. There was a strategic move. There was a strategic pattern. Five had the oil. Five never had the oil. But 10 of them were all equal virgins. I pray tonight, when the day will come, when the bridegroom will knock, when the day will come for us to begin to count what have we done with our life, we will not stand to regret in Jesus' name. Amen. What about our attitude to life? I've made a discovery by the grace of God. I've listened to a few uh, people talk about it. I've seen it on the chat, on the social media. I've read even long before I, I even met it on social media. That attitude is 100% of things. Put your life skill and a goal setting. Let's take example for education, for marriage, and so on. If Anybody be a man or a woman loses attitude and character. You cannot gain anything in this world again because attitude is a hundred percent of everything you present about yourself. Do you know how they got hundred percent? They said put A B C D, write it down to Z. Before A, put one. Before B, put two. Before C, put three. Then look at the word attitude. A one T plus Add it together, you get 100%. So attitude, our disposition to life is part of how we can gain positivity into what? Into gaining our life skill and our goal setting. I have some more other things here we can discuss, but I want to give you an acronym, an acronym and a biblical support for the acronyms as we are closing for this section because I'm praying God that our host will give us another opportunity. It's just because of time. We give us another opportunity. I could not overrush this topic. That is why. The acronym is called SMART. S-M-A-R-T. I will give that as an assignment. I will give bibli bi biblical passages that are correspondent to that. And I want you to study it. And next time, by the grace of God, if we have to meet, 
we will be discussing further on it. One, to be smart is S will stand for specific. S will stand for specific. And you can see that in the book of Abacob chapter two, Abacook chapter two, verse two to three. Abacook chapter two, verse two to three. You know, specific. You know what the Bible says there? It said, vision is for an appointed time. He said, write it down. He said, though it may tarry. He said, but if you come to pass, be specific. What do you want in life? What do you want to achieve in your career? You want to be married? What kind of a marriage do you want? You want children? What kind of a child do you want? Write it down. Be specific with God and take it to the Lord in prayer. M, be measurable. Measurable. Look at Luke 14, 28. Measurable. Luke 14, 28. That's why I said to you, that passage is talking about, do you see a man that wants to build a house that will not first sit down to count the cost, whether it be sufficient to finish, be measurable. That's why you see people, when they have opportunity, they want to get a mortgage, they will go to mortgages or brokers, they will do what? They will make a lot of findings. They will not sit down in one place. You want to build a house, they do the same thing. You want an education, you want a career, you want a specific line of career. You want to be an engineer, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a scientist, you want to go to moon, you want to fly with NASA, you have to measure them. Otherwise, this thing cannot be attained. But like I said, if you are a child of God, you are listening tonight and you take this on board, Luke 137 said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible because it's the word of God and it's God himself that is giving revelation to us through this, and it shall be done. Number A, A for smart, A we call attainable. Attainable, Proverbs 16, 3. R will be realistic. Realistic, Proverbs 21, 5. Are you there in the midst of plenty? What do you do? When you are short, what do you do? When it's so much overflowing, what do you do? Do you just spend anyhow? You just buy what you don't need? You just go traveling for nothing, say, and so on and so forth. So please let us be very, very realistic with what we are doing. And T, time bound. Time bound. I'll be closing in that time bound with Ecclesiastes 3, 17b. The Bible says there, there is time for everything. And in time, you have to set specific goals into your time. How do I mean? You have to have a long-term plan for five years. You have to shorten it down to maybe two, two years. You have to shorten it down to one, one year. You have to shorten it down to what you achieve in one month time, what we achieve in next week, and so on and so forth. But I haven't said all these brothers and sisters as I'm bringing this to a close for time's sake. The only people that cannot use this biblical principle and it work for them are the people that have not been born again. You have not allowed Jesus to come into your heart such that you will know him. Let me tell you again, God has no respecter, but then he has promised the redeemers of him, the ones that he has saved, that what? They will be in plenty. And I pray tonight, as you want to give your life, or if you are backslided, you want to return to Christ, I just want to share a word of prayer with you. And I know, as I share the word of prayer with you tonight, I believe God Almighty will touch your heart to realize yourself that, oh, so all these things are in the Bible, and I did not know that you can go and search. And the Holy Spirit in this time of fasting and prayer will minister to your life and you will be able to see clearly your life skill, your life purpose. After all, the Bible in Revelation 4, 11 says, God creates us all and all things for his purpose. So why do you want to lose out of the purpose? If you have not given your life, this cannot apply to you. But if you want to give your life, this is an opportunity. I want you to bow down your heads. And for those of us that has given our life, I want us to pray for such people on this platform that as they give their life, they'll be able to have opportunity and hope and desire 
to carry their Bible, to buy a Bible, to begin to study, to begin to look at all these biblical passages we have mentioned in this theme tonight, in this encounter series 41, and begin to apply it to their life. Shall we bow down our head? And if you are backsliding or you are contemplating backsliding, please don't. Let's all bow down our head to pray. In Jesus' name, our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for an opportunity again like this in this Encounter Series 41 to expose to us, to teach us biblical principles to set in our life skills and career goal. But this set of us that are here that we have not known you, Almighty, I'm asking, please by yourself, draw them to yourself in Jesus' name. Please, as they give their life to you, as they renew their mind and they become a new man in you, God Almighty, please don't forsake them. Don't leave them. Don't, oh Lord God, abandon them. Lord, draw them closer in Jesus' name. And for all of us together, as we join faith together now, begin to relook into these Bible words, these Bible, Bible passages, these Bible principles, and we we'll begin to apply it on a daily basis to our life. God, I ask, please let all this glorify you and you alone. Thank you for the opportunity tonight. And whenever we have opportunity to come back together again, Lord, you will teach us deeper things to God. And for this, oh God, we say thank you. And glory, honor be to your holy name. And I pray, Lord, as I've done this, I will not be forsaken, I will not be abandoned, and I will not be forgotten. And Lord God, I will not be a castaway. Thank you, everlasting Redeemer. I cover everyone in the blood of Jesus. I cover the host, our host in the blood of Jesus and his family, and I cover his ministry in the blood of Jesus. And whenever we hear from one another, according to the word of God, it says, righteousness shall be had, good news shall be had in the, in the home, home and places abode of the righteous people. So shall it be with thanks. In Jesus' glorious name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I hope I will see you in the next series so that we can look at a lot of other things and we can see the benefits that will be attaching to us when we set a life skill good and when we have a good goal and God will help us so that we can become the Joseph of, 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 of this future and the Joseph of today and our cup will run over in Jesus' name. God bless you and thank you for listening. Hallelujah. Thanks, Lord. Thanks. 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 We give you thanks. We give you thanks. For all you have done. You have done the good. We are so, so blessed. Our souls are forever. So blessed, our souls are found rest. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. We are so blessed, our souls are found rest. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. Our souls are found rest. Abba Father, we give you thanks. Our beloved, wherever you are watching us from, we want to appreciate you for joining us. I'm super excited. And we want to thank God for the man of God that God has used tonight. Great topic, great wisdom, and I mean, 
something to take home, something to reflect, you know, especially at this perilous time. And we want to thank God for taking us out gradually out of this pandemic because God has promised us. He said he would take us to this destination that he has promised. Amen. And that is where we are going and we just want to bless the Lord. This is this is an evidence of it. You now, when the man of God was talking about how do you spend your time, how do you utilize the, the difficulties and take advantage of it to, I mean, God gave us the revelation of this platform just at the time of the, of the pandemic. And uh, that is God. And that is what the man of God is talking about. I want you to reflect on this. I just, just want you to be a listener. Be, I want you to be a doer and just reflect on it and think about what are the things that God is speaking to your spirit, you know, for you to explore. Because some of us, that greatness is just around us. It's just around us. But we are still praying some prayers that we that does not give us the direction. We say, oh God, bless somebody to bless me. When the blessing is already around the corner, it's just for you to listen to what God what God saying concerning your situation. What is God saying to your spirit? And this is what we're talking about. And God bless the man of God. Our Father, we just bless you for we, you uh, anytime we call on you, you just you're just there. And uh, we, we thank God for the ministry that God has given unto you. And we want to pray for that man of God. That God Almighty will bless him, he will bless his family, he will bless his wife, bless his children. God Almighty, mightiness, he will, he will touch everything concerning him. His children, his business, his family, his ministry, the Agape family in Ireland. We, we pray that God Almighty will increase the anointing in the name of jesus he Amen. will establish it and he will expand this coast in the Amen. name of jesus have a father thank you for everything concerning pastor edwin adibayo father we pray that you will do great and mighty things in his ministry in the name of jesus as he has been a vessel to bless us tonight father we pray oh lord that you, nothing, even everything that seems dead in his life, you will rise again and Amen. flourish in your glory Amen. in the name of Amen. Jesus. Thank Amen. you for answering prayers. We bless you, Lord. We give you glory. And for Amen. us all over the world watching us, uh, wherever you are, on Facebook, on YouTube, on uh, uh, Zoom, we want to pray concerning you that God Almighty will, uh, he will touch you and, and will meet you at the point of your needs in the name of Jesus. He will Amen. reveal unto you that revelation, that revelation to your breakthrough, he will reveal unto you in the Amen. name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. As we, I, I, we give you glory, we, 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 we want to thank you for what you have done for us, even today, that you have revealed yourself to us in different ways. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We bless your Amen. name. Just mighty name. Mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, Thank we, you, sir. Before we share the grace, before we share the grace, um, as the man of God was uh, ministering, ministering, ministering the, the word, and the Lord, the Lord opened my eyes to see the scriptures, and I, I mean, I, I, I didn't have, is a scripture I've, I've always read in the past, but not lately. And as he was ministering, and I was reading, and, and I, but the Lord put my mind into John sixteen thirteen. I mean, that, that when, but when he, the Spirit of the truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father. The message regarding the son, and he will disclose to you what is to come. I don't, I, 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 I do not know how I stumble into that. And I, I, the spirit of the Lord was ministering to me that this word coming forth is of the Lord, and that word wants to bless somebody. That word wants to bless somebody. So it's somebody that is praying for breakthrough, but that breakthrough is, be, is around you. The Lord has been ministering that breakthrough to you. And as the man was ministering that word, 
your breakthrough is within that word that word the smart word re, re, i mean reflect on it and i believe do you know who god uh, god knows you and you know yourself and as you listen to this word the lord will bless you in the name of jesus Abba Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We magnify you. Uh, we bless you. Every Wednesday, we meet at this platform. Please don't take it for granted. If you have the time, join us. Join us and join us. Don't get tired of this because we are in a perilous time and um, uh, 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 we, we need every opportunity. Every opportunity to evangelize the gospel. Every opportunity to refresh our heart. Every opportunity to refresh our souls. I mean, you need to do that. You need to do that. And as you do so, the, bless, the Lord will bless you. I remain your host, Emmanuel Oladuni Damiro. Um, every Wednesday, 7 to 9. Uh, if you're watching us in America, it's 1 p.m. If you're watching us on UK, from UK, 7 p.m. And from Nigeria, at the moment, is 8 p.m. Um, and if the time changes, we'll, we will also uh, broadcast the, the, the exact time and um, from South Korea it should be around 11 p 11 a.m. and um, if you just look at that and tune in from your own time wherever you are in the world and as you do so the Lord the Lord will bless you uh, we want to appreciate all our viewers everyone on Facebook um, everyone on the um, uh, pastor Mrs. Adebayo we appreciate you as well for joining us tonight and uh, also our man, uh, our father in the Lord, Pastor Vincent, uh, I can see him on Facebook. I want to appreciate you. And also, I think I've, I'm seeing uh, one of our men of God as well joining us uh, for the first time, uh, Pastor Isaac. Um, by Pastor Isaac, I think I saw him on Zoom earlier on. I call Pastor Isaac Akode. We want to thank you. We want to appreciate you, sir. And we do not take it for granted. We appreciate you for joining us on this platform as well. And as many that I cannot even recognize or know their names, please, God bless you. We, we, we appreciate you. And please stay tuned. Continue to stay tuned. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you. Shall we just share the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Thank Jesus God. Christ the Lord, Christ, God, the love of and God, the sweet fellowship, and the sweet of, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit now, with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, the Lord, goodness, and goodness shall, shall follow us all the days, all the days of, of our lives, and, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom. See you again. Next. Shalom. Bye. God bless you. Amen.